Hello and welcome to Werewolf the Apocalypse, Hearts of the Forest. Now this is a uh, sort of in the world of darkness setting, same same sort of uh, setting as Vampire the Masquerade, but obviously this has to do with werewolves. And uh, this is a visual novel, I believe, some kind. I don't know a hell of a lot about it, but I've heard some good things. So figured I would check it out. And let's just jump straight into it. Uh, yep, it's fine. Prologue, premonition. Okay, so we have stats. This is a game about rage and how it helps us do things that need to be done, as well as things that we later regret, sometimes both. How do you feel about that? Um, I guess I prefer to think before I act. The indicators change in Maya's current stats. Your character sheet may contain more details. So you're the observant and cunning type. That's okay. There's no right path here. Just your decisions and their consequences. Just follow the path and see where it takes us. Consequences, consequences, I'm smarter than now. Okay, let's just follow the path and see where it takes us. Okay, I guess I'm a bit more spiritual. The forest. The woods are full of stars. They flicker, come closer, run away. They want me to chase them, to play hide and seek. I observe. I watch as they dance around the tree trunks, float up on the gusts of wind that shiver through the branches, disappear among the leaves. There are no words in their dance, but I don't understand them. Not yet. So there are words in their dance, but I don't understand them. Not yet. Then they bunch up and fly towards me like an arrow. Rushing down, they're soon upon me. But just before the spear of light pierces my breast, they disappear, and the dark of night returns. Okay, my rage is low. Indicates that this version of the story happened because of your current stats. Okay. In the darkness, the spirits keeping the forest alive whisper about the enemy. I begin to move, unnoticed, one with the night. And then I wake up. Cold and alone. Confused, I open my eyes. The forest around me is thick dark and reeks of decay to such an extent that it's hard to breathe. Why am I here? My head is spinning. Why am I here? There must be a reason. The tree trunks wrapped tightly in the dark leaved ivy, covered in ripples of lichen where the vines haven't taken hold. The thorny leafless brushes at their base are overrun with nettles. The fungi radiate with a ghoulish sickly green light. Dark, sponge-like mushrooms cling to the fallen trees. I try to breathe. I take a deep breath and suddenly realise that it's not the forest that smells so foul. It's me. I look down and see my hands covered in dark substance. I'm naked. A sticky, glistening film of liquids clinging to my skin. I can feel it on my face. In my hair. Blood. I'm alert. Nature is never quiet. The leaves rustle in the wind. Small creatures scuttle in the undergrowth. There is a whisper. I don't understand what it means, but the word resonates in my head. Garu. Who said that? There's a severed head right in front of me. Some choices are hard to make and they strain your willpower. Um, no, I don't think I need to touch the severed head. I'm going to be sick. The face is contorted, the eyes bulging, the mouth open, the, s the tongue stuck out. It's obscene. I feel bile raising in my throat and I start to retch. And then the eyes, then eyes open in the darkness. Who is it? I can see their silhouettes, shades of jet black against the darkness. They smell of fur and moss and bloodied earth. Massive creatures, some with horns, some with antlers. Their eyes burn like small fiery windows into hell. I look at them and something wakes inside me. Defiance. 
They tell me stories of their lost battles and dying hopes. I say, no. I tell them my stories of the enemy and how they are so stupid, so clueless that we almost feel pity as we kill them. They listen and laugh. I laugh with them. In a moment of clarity, I almost understand what the forest wants from me. And then I wake up. I guess I'm playing as a character called Maya. Chapter 1 Arrival. Chapter 1. Dreams. Maya? Maya. Maya, wake up. I opened my eyes. My neck was stiff. I stretched lazily as I assessed where I was out of the corner of my eye. I wasn't in the forest anymore, I was in a bus. The sun streaming through the windows was making it hard to see. The girl next to me was touching my shoulder, disturbed. Uh, I comforted her. It's alright. I squeezed her hand to comfort her. She looked at me concerned. We were laughing, like, maniacally. It blinked. The memory of the dream was still there, and the taste of blood in my mouth. I'm glad, I'm glad I wasn't alone. Thank you for coming with me, I said. The girl next to me smiled. I think we're almost there. My name is Anya. We'd met a couple of weeks earlier on the orientation day. She was from Norway. I'm not going to do a Norwegian accent, I'm sorry. She was from Norway, a tall, broad-shouldered, calm person who wore her long hair and braids. Somehow I'd managed to talk her into this crazy field trip across the land of my ancestors. Uh, she seemed excited. Anya in, reached into her backpack and took out two apples. I'm really happy we decided to come here, she said. Yeah, I said, offering her some of my cabanosi. Dried meaty sausages that were so much better than the original Polish ones back in the US. I was glad Anya had decided to come with me. I had problems keeping friends around and really needed one. I did some searching, she said, said from over her phone. And this place is amazing, the last primordial forest in Europe. This trip was my idea. A summer language course was starting in a few weeks and I'd managed to talk on Anya into skipping the tours of the concentration camps and old churches and visiting uh, Bielweza, I can't pronounce that, sorry, National Park with me instead. So far it's beautiful, she said, her eyes smiling. But why are we here again? Good question. Why were we there? There being... Biawo Visa. A small village in the north, in northeast Poland near the border of Belarus. It was famous for its national park, the very last European bison, and according to a quick web search, occasional tensions between far-right troublemakers and the local Belarusian community. The most honest answer would have been, it's because I've been dreaming about the forest there since I can remember. The people didn't understand when I said things like that. They looked her in the eyes. Uh, I told her as much as I could. I wanted to see the forest. I heard it was a must. That wasn't technically a lie. When I was little, my grandfather told me stories about an ancient forest full of wonders and wolves that lived in it. It's all I got from that part of the family before my mum took me, ran away and cut off all contact with my dad. But I remembered the stories well. I remembered the name of the forest. Puszcza Bałowiska. This will always be our home, my grandfather used to say. I waited for her to respond. Anya fell silent for a moment. I think it's great that you come from such a magical place, she smiled. The last ancient forest in Europe, thousands of years old. I wasn't sure if I was fond of that magic, but it was hard to ignore. And that was precisely why I needed to do something, anything about my future. A damn forest and my weird ass family. I had a clear goal in mind. I wasn't there by mistake, I'd planned this trip for months. A clear goal in mind. I had to learn the truth about my roots. My grandfather's stories, the secrets, my mother running away. There was mystery in my past. It was time I uncovered the truth about who I was. There was a mystery to uncover and adventure to be adventure to be had. I couldn't wait. Welcome home. 
I'll keep trying having to try to pronounce that one. Biawo Weiska. Weiska? Weiska. Sorry for any Polish people, I assume, or Belarusian people listening. Looks like an overexposed photo of a village with the contrast turned all the way up. It was a hot, sleepy day on a hot, sleepy street. And everything, the old trees, the yellow grass, the weathered wooden houses and fences, seemed almost normal. Everything except the shadows. They were sharp as though they were freshly printed with the darkest of inks. And they moved. For a second I could have sworn they moved. But then I realised it was just a black cat walking down the sidewalk. When it saw me, it stopped in its tracks. I watched it with suspicion. Hey, do you think there are rabid cats? Because this one's acting weird. I mean, they're rabid squirrels, why not cats? She shrugged, looking around. Didn't you say your friend would be waiting for us? But he wasn't there and the cat was still staring at me. Let's go, and you put on her backpack. I'm tired and I really, really need to find a toilet. For a moment, I was tempted to just get out of the sun and worry about my missing friend later. Um... Do, do, do. No, okay, apparently I didn't need him. Like, but that's fine. I grabbed my backpack and started walking. I'll manage on my own. Thanks for nothing, I muttered under my breath. Enya sighed with relief and followed me. Uh, the place had a few hotels and hostels, but the preferred form of accommodation was bed and breakfasts. That's where we stayed. I found one that was nice, clean and had good reviews. We had a room on the second floor with a huge window and a great view of the forest. We dropped off our stuff and freshened up a bit. Maybe we should have waited for your friend, Anya asked, concerned. I shrugged. I'll find him sooner or later. Before you go, check your check out your character sheet. Look for it in the upper right corner of the screen find a load of useful info about Maya, her background, personality, goals and so on there. You can also check who your friends and who your enemies are. Okay, so look, character sheets. Name, Maya Bordich, age 24, professional student, nationality American. Uh, so she is not very brave, mm, it's very slightly inspiring, very slightly analytical, uh, a bit spiritual, uh, minorly cunning. Uh, mind and body. Condition healthy. Goal mystery. Learn your family history. Pursue to, re get to regain willpower. Uh, relations. Uh, friendly with Anya. Family. It's complicated. This was a quaint tourist town, but I had other things in mind. The lay of the land. I had a clear goal in mind. My family was entangled with this town in the forest. I had to uncover my roots. Anya went with you. Um, go to the forest while it's daytime. It was dark in the woods, dark, humid and chilly. The leaves didn't let through a lot of sunlight. Daniel looked at Anya and me over his shoulder. How do you like her? Well, we had met maybe 20 minutes earlier. I knew at Google local guides and he was apparently the best person to go to if you wanted to see the forest. So I found him and now here we were. I wasn't sure whom he meant. You mean the forests? I asked. Polish was a strange language that gave the most unexpected genders to objects and places. I mean Pusha. He gestured around us. The words sounded like rustling in the leaves. Pusha. Pusha is the right word, not forest. Forests are like f fields or orchards, cultivated, he spat as he said it, and Pusha, she is older than, than even the concept of fields. He was using the word although, uh, though it was a name. Let's looked at the Pusha again. Kind of butchering these names, apologies. Looked around with fresh eyes. I felt as though I'd entered an ancient tomb. Gigantic dead trunks were decomposing slowly around me. Young plants and colourful mushrooms were sprouting from them. The trees that still lived stretched towards the sky like columns holding up a vaunted canopy which blocked out all but a few rays of sunlight. There was stillness and there was movement, darkness and light. 
If spirits existed, that place would be swarming with them. Uh, I loved what I saw. There should be more places like this, I said earnestly. Or more of this place. Daniel lifted his head and looked me right in the eyes. Yeah, yes, you're right, he said with a serious expression. He was a strange guy, slender but muscular, not the CrossFit type. It was more the kind of strength you get from working all day long in the open. His skin was weather-beaten and bronzed by the sun, like tanned leather, and he moved in a very deliberate way. But his fingers were slim and delicate, and his eyes were the strangest shade of yellow-green. Then I remembered why I was there. Perhaps he knew my family. You're local. Maybe you've heard of my family, I asked. Not from here, but my family was, I continued. And I think something secret connects me to this place. Daniel stopped abruptly and turned to me, watching for a while. His nostrils flared as though we were tasting the air. Yes, his face broke into a smile. I think our families might have known each other many winters past. Husha still remembers. Come on, he started walking. I know exactly what you need to see. Uh, that piqued my interest. Progressed my mystery goal. Hint, my family had no connection to the forest. So I was right, there is something hidden in my family's past that seems to have a lot to do with the forest. Every time you learn or do something significant that brings you close to your goal, you gain, you gain willpower. With every step, I was getting closer to solving the mystery, so I followed him. Um, you have to choose a path, he said. There's the old wolf den, or I could show you the barrows first. Or clearing that some folks call a place of power. Place of power sounds good. Just one small thing. We started walking, but after a few steps he stopped abruptly like he'd remembered something, and he turned to me. C could you do me a f favour, please? He asked. Uh, sure. Yeah, man, sure. What do you need? I smiled. He ran his hand through the moss on the dead tree trunk, smelled his fingers, then reached into his pocket. He took out a small stone. An amulet? A personal amulet of his, maybe. I felt my hair stand on end and my nostrils widen for some reason. The smell of the forest grew stronger. The game tracks your decisions on how Maya approaches problems. They will accumulate and gradually reveal what kind of person she is, deep in her heart. The story changes to reflect Maya's personality. I, I would like you t to take this stone, he held out his hand toward me, and throw it in the direction you think we should go. I did what he asked. Okay, I said, reaching for the stone. I took the stone and closed my hand around it. Be careful, I whispered Anya. Uh, I was curious. It was warm and I felt grounded when I squeezed it. I closed my eyes and thought about the place of power, trying to imagine that place. I thought about energy emanating from the ground, filling me to the top of my head. I could see myself standing barefoot on the moss, surrounded by trees. I threw the stone. I felt my higher hand rising entirely on its own, and then throwing the stone as far as I could. When I opened my eyes, there was a path where the stone had fallen. I hadn't noticed it before. Okay, Daniel patted my back. Let's go. Okay. Sure. Uh, let's... I played it cool. He gave me a faint smile before he turned to head deeper into the forest. A buzzing in my ears. It started with the hair on the backs of my hands rising. The air around me seemed brighter, lighter. The leaves and the tree trunks turned yellow and my skin started to prickle. I realised I couldn't hear anything except for the low buzzing that was filling my ears. I couldn't think. Words appeared and disappeared in my head faster than I could notice them. I had to do something. Snap out of it. Um, I tried to clear my mind. I closed my eyes and tried to focus. This weird sensation was coming from within, after all. I just needed to find its source. But I wasn't the source, I realised. I was only resonating. The source was somewhere else. I opened my eyes. I opened my eyes and when I did, I was looking straight at the clearing. I could see the silhouette of a person between the trees. They were moving slowly, deliberately. And the moment I noticed them, I felt the buzzing slow down. 
I approached. The clearing was a plateau between huge boulders. There were double trunked trees between the rocks and an angular wooden construction that stuck out of the ground like a sore thumb. There was a bike leaning on it. And more importantly, there was a man and he was moving in the most beautiful, harmonious way I'd ever seen. It was hypnotizing. I looked at him for a moment, the way his muscles danced under the, his tanned skin, trying to trace his movements. Before every grand gesture, every stretch, every push, there was a micro-movement, an impulse from his core, and I could feel it was even deeper. The energy that had been filling me earlier took form. It was flowing in rhythm with his steps, with the flow of his hands. The words came out of my mouth seemingly without my knowing. What did he do? What? How? What did you do? He smiled. It's a little bit complicated. He stretched his hand towards me. I'm Cornell, he said, with a hard German accent that I won't try and do. Sh shouldn't you be on the logging site? Daniel asked, after, uh, asked him after I introduced myself. I needed to centre myself, he answered. The others are still there, don't worry. we are cutting down trees in this forest? Wait, logging? Here? I couldn't believe my ears. He smiled bitterly. Yes, logging. Here. That's why I needed to calm down. This p place is special, Daniel said. So some people call it a pl place of p power, as I told you. And they have good reason to, Cornell added. Look around you. So I looked. It was a clearing filled with light. I could see Cornell's traces. Beautiful pattern on the ground, but there was only one thing that caught my attention more than anything else. Um, the boulders around us were strange. These rocks, someone brought them here, right? I asked, looking at the boulders, which upon close inspection formed a circle. The stones were irregular and nestled deep into the ground. People believe this was a place of worship thousands of years ago, hence the fruit trees, the stone circle, and now the tower. And indeed, there's a lot of energy in this place. You felt it, didn't you? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I felt it, I said without enthusiasm. The Pusha is wounded and in pain, and it calls out in rage to anyone who can hear it. Here, this call is louder, you see. The login, his eyes darkened, is slaughter. And you gasped quietly. Every priceless thing can be destroyed by greed. Login is illegal, of course, but illegal is sometimes just a way of saying a bit more expensive, but still profitable. Especially for huge corporations. Forest is hurt. The wound is getting bigger, as is his de as is its desperation. Um, who's doing the logging? I frowned. Who's doing the logging? I asked kindly. If anything was to be done here, it had to be done in an informed way. Cornell regarded me for a moment with a faint smile. You have a connection with this forest, don't you? You should come to the login site and meet everyone. Absolutely, Anya said eagerly. It sounded good. It could be the next step, and even if it wasn't, something had to be fucking done about the login situation. Yeah, I'll come, I smiled. Great, you will understand what you need to do. He jumped suddenly and looked at the wooden tower and the bike I'd noticed earlier. I Schwalb is getting restless, he said. And, as Daniel pointed out, I should be on the login site setting up for the protest. Schwalb? What is that? I asked, confused. He n named his bike Swallow, Daniel explained. He loves it very much. Cornell grinned. Oh, I do. Nice meeting you, Maya. All I wanted to do was get out of there. The moment he disappeared, the buzzing came back. It wasn't as strong as before, but it was there. All I wanted to do was get out of there. Through the forest. We went on through the greenery. The buzzing in my ears slowly decreased. Um... Wolves Den? Was it the town? Uh, oh, Wolf's Den, I guess. The old den. 
First thing I noticed when we stopped was a pine tree. Pine tree I knew. I remembered it, small, twisted and crooked, with roots sticking out of the side of the hill in which it grew. I knew it was wise, every bend of every branch held hidden knowledge that was waiting to be discovered. Months before that, when I decided to come to Poland, I dreamed of that tree. I was sure of it, just like I was sure that under its roots I'd find a burrow, and a few feet away another one, like two dark eyes gazing at me as I approached. Daniel passed me and approached the tree. He pressed his cheek against the trunk. Uh, hello, he said quietly. Hello again. I said quietly. Daniel looked at me with surprise, but didn't comment. This is the den, announced Daniel. It's abandoned, of course, but still worth seeing. Why was it abandoned? What happened? I asked. Humans happened, Daniel sighed. He sat under the tree, leaning his back against it. It was a hot spring morning when they found this den. No one knows who the men were, even though it was only one human generation ago. There were six cups here under the roots of the tree. It stopped stuttering and seemed to enjoy telling the story. I enjoyed listening. And I enjoyed listening to it. There was something calming in his voice and the way he talked. His slow gestures and wistful eyes made me feel as though I was with the cups on that hot spring morning. I don't think they wanted to hurt the wolves, he continued. They probably thought they'd been abandoned. That's why they took the cups with them. Humans have this instinct that makes you try to befriend everything, especially if it's dangerous. Um, yeah, we were like that. Yeah, we are something like that, aren't we? I smiled. I'm not saying it always works out, but the intention is good and I believe the men who kidnapped the wolves wanted to do something kind, he continued. Anyway, they took them. Out of the six, two lived to see the cold summer that year. The wolf mother used to come to the farm they were at and howl. People went grey if they heard her. I knew that howl. And suddenly I heard that howl. I knew exactly how it sounded and I felt despair and longing gnawing at my soul. I remembered how the cups had reacted. Um, they were silent. When she came, we never answered. Young as we were, we understood. There was no going back. Survival was the only law and despair was a weakness. Maya, are you okay? I knew asked, putting her hand on my shoulder. I felt for the cups. I just feel for the cups. I, I know a little about dividing families myself. Oh. Yeah, that usually ended the conversation. Daniel sighed, looking at the tree in the burrow. Uh, the cubs that survived were sold to some people in... Kenufka. But after a while, both of them ended, uh, ended up back here with the scientists. They have a station in the National Park. One of the wolves, Kazan was a celebrity of sorts. If you saw any wolf photos from here, they were probably of Kazan. He was even on postcards. I kept thinking about the mother. I wonder what happened to the mother. There's something missing from this story. I also felt like she was more important than the story made her out to be. What kind of wolf was she after all that? that, that that's a good good observation. She eventually stopped looking for her cubs. She c came back to the forest and found new children. There was a slight gust of wind and the tree creaked. I remember that sound from my dream as well. A sound that made me feel safe. What happened to Kazan? And what happened later? I felt like I knew Daniel well enough to ask that. Is Kazan still alive? He, he lived for, for eight years in the park. Daniel looked at me with his yellow-green eyes, until the day let another male wolf into his pen. I held my breath. The day fought, fought over the she-wolf and Kazan lost. Annie looked up from her phone. I read about that. She sounded upset. I didn't notice he was wounded. It took him three days to die. Daniel shrugged. He lived a long life and died fighting. It was good. We fell silent. He looked at the burrows for a long time. This place is my friend, so I tried to keep it important and respect it. 
I think it's my mission, you know. Could relate to that. I, I think I understand. Every family had a story worth remembering. Daniel looked at the tree lawn last time. Goodbye, he said. I also said my goodbyes. We left. Um, I guess the barrows. The dead hills. The trail soon disappeared. Sometimes we walked along a barely visible path made by some animals. Sometimes we followed a stream or gully. But for most of our trek through the dense undergrowth, we walked through dense undergrowth. Daniel was a great guide. He had no compass in hand, no map, yet we were heading dead north and he moved through the forest with grace and ease, like it was his backyard and he was showing us around. It was a pleasant walk. There was always a path through the brambles, the ground was even and the branches stayed out of our way. It almost felt like the forest wanted us to find a way. The forest was full of wonders. Walking through the forest, I couldn't decide what, uh, what to do. I wanted to see, hear, touch and taste everything. Wild strawberries were hiding in bushes, fresh and sweet. Leaves glistened with droplets of dew. Snails, pebbles, strange plants and mushrooms. Armies of ants marching across our path. Everything was a treasure. It was though the Pusha was showing us the best they had to offer. I took what I wanted. I couldn't resist the temptation and when I spotted something I like, I took it. Best fruit I'd ever tasted. The taste of the fruits was unforgettable, more real than anything I'd ever, everything I'd ever tasted. Shouldn't you wash it first? asked Daniel when I reached for another wild strawberry. We continued in silence. We had been walking for a while when I noticed that Daniel's steps had become slower. He was also looking around more often and hunched slightly. Uh, I just enjoyed the moment. I sat down on a fallen tree trunk, looked around and just enjoyed the afternoon. After a moment, Daniel shook his head. They're tricky to find sometimes, he mundered, mumbled. Be quiet for a minute, p please. That's when I felt it, ash in my mouth, the smell of smoke and wet soil and a pool. I knew where to go. I think I know where to go, I said, surprised. He tilted his head. Oh, okay, let's check it out. I pointed to the barely visible path to my left, under a dying tree. He followed me and I followed my feet, knowing exactly where they should go. Under the crooked tree, past the dead tree trunk and sponge-like mushrooms, across the patch of wet, green, uh, dark green moss, all the way to a place that didn't look much different than the other parts of the forest, until he noticed the mounds. There was something about the flattened hills that drew my full attention. I could remember... A memory stirred in my mind. No, it wasn't a memory. It was a feeling anchored in my chest, akin to the taste of the ash in my mouth and the smell of smoke. Longing, sadness, resignation. But there was more. A sense of sacredness. It filled me with calm excitement. When I closed my eyes, I saw fire burning in the darkness. Voices. The village was long gone. Its houses burned to the ground, its people slaughtered. But the spirits were still there. They had accumulated over time. Some in ancient Roman armour, some in rags, some in animal skins. Some in uniforms from the world wars, some in modern camo. Are we dead? Where were we? Where are we? They asked me with frantic whispers. Is this hell? Uh, it was paradise. No, it was paradise, just not for them. When I opened my eyes, Daniel was watching me. You were somewhere else, he said. You said you had f family here? I nodded. I heard that my father's family came from here, I nodded. I don't know much about them, though. He sighed. I, I don't think you should be here, he said tersely. You're not ready. You knew something. Why? What do you know? I wasn't letting it go. Uh, about you? N not much. But, but I know the pusher. The past is cl close here. His eyes were worried as he looked at me. And if the pusher 
calls you, it's wise to listen. But it's not wise to get, get lost in the voices. Come. On the way back, I was lost in my thoughts. The voices in the vision knew what I had to do. It's almost though it was expected of me. Was this what my family did here? Why had Daniel asked about my family? Was the vision showing me what my ancestors had done here? I accepted that thought. Progressed gold mystery. I smiled. The bigger picture was, picture was finally starting to come to light. Magic was in my blood. The walk back was uneventful. Okay, I guess we will... I felt a little tired. The shadows of the enormous trees caught the sweat of my skin. The taste of ash lingered in my mouth. Uh, we made our way back to town. Serendipity. As we walked through town, Anya nudged me and pointed at a, tra a tall, broad-shouldered, freckled guy standing at the bus stop with a lost expression on his face. I remembered his face from the pictures on social media. It was a friend who'd stood me up earlier. I was glad to see him. Bartek? I waved to him and smiled. Sorry I missed you earlier. Maya, what are you doing here? He blurted with surprise when he saw me. I was sure you missed the bus. We started walking and talking. His accent was broad and East European. Uh, Anya looked, liked him. Anya took an immediate liking to him, I could tell. I always could smell romance in the air. We walked along the only street in the village, near in the centre, if you could call it that. Every house had a garden, and the air was dense with the fragrance of flowers. I took a deep breath. So, did you manage to trace the name I gave you? I asked. Bartek shook his head. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Sorry. He was avoid avoiding my eyes. A trick of sweat ran down his temple. He looked afraid. What's up, man? I smiled. Spill the beans. I'm a big girl. I can take it. But he climbed up. You know what? I think you should drop it. I stopped. He was scared of something. I turned to Bartek and touched his arm. What's he eating at you, man? He shrugged and shook his head. You can tell us. Yeah. Anya did gently. I gave him time. I swallowed the urge to shake him out of it and just waited. It took him a while before he finally opened up. Well, he brushed his forehead with the back of his hand. I did ask. I started with the old people here. I told them that my friend from the States was looking for her roots and wanted to know about the place her family came from. You know the drill. At first, people were very, you know, receptive. I waited for the other shoe to drop. And then I mentioned your name. He shook his head. I urged him to continue. Bartek, no dramatic pauses, please. I urged him. Tension is killing me. One of the old men here told me to go to hell. The other spat on the ground as his wife crossed herself. For a moment, he looked younger and smaller. And then my own grandmother told me to stop asking. She said something else as well. I tensed up. What? I asked. She told me to pray for you. Suddenly the sweet golden afternoon wasn't so sweet and golden anymore. Uh, I laughed. Nicely done. I punched his arm and laughed. I almost thought you were scared of me. Bartek smiled awkwardly. Yeah, it was just wild wives tales. Look at me, I winked at him. Do I look like a big bad wolf to you? We walked in silence, but my mind was in overdrive. People didn't want to talk, and I could only mean one thing. I was on the right track. People were scared of my family. My pulse quickened and I tensed up like a hound that smelled blood. I was on the right track. I needed to gather my thoughts. It was a long day, a lot had happened, and I was really tired. It was good to meet you in person, I said, but I need to be going. All this travelling and walking through the forest, it was exhausting, I smiled. Sure, where are you staying? It turned out we were going the same way, of course. We went back to the B&B. The B&B was quaint. I left Anu and Bartek outside. They were lost in conversation and didn't even notice I was gone. When I got out of the shower, Anu was back, smiling and a little flustered. What a day, she smiled. So what do you think? 
I made a quick mental inventory of everything that had happened that day. Uh, the place of power sure made an impression. I felt this strange energy in the place of power before we met Cornell. It still freaks me out. Cornell seemed cool though, I knew answered, and he seemed to totally understand what you're going through. Uh, I was moved by the story of the wolves. The wolf cubs that were kidnapped and died in captivity, I sighed. The story stayed with me, you know. She put a hand on my arm. Divided families, huh? It's okay, Maya. Uh, Daniel was a strange guy. There's something strange about the forest guide. I tried to put my finger on it. He acted like he learned how to be human from a book. A book he didn't understand. I know, right? Maybe it's the isolation. It seems he spends most of his time in the forest. Speaking of the forest, they were cutting it down. Can't believe they're logging here. I shook my head. Isn't the forest an UNESCO or something? A list or something? Yeah, I know. I want to check out this protest people were talking about. Maybe we should go there tomorrow. I was freaked out by a vision at the Barrows. Something strange happened when I was visiting near Barrows, I said, and instantly regretted it. Ah, never mind, I was probably dehydrated. Yeah, it was probably it, but you looked weird. She laughed nervously. A lot of things today were weird if you think about it. Ah, I didn't feel like talking anymore. You know what? I'm seriously tired. Let's call it a day, shall we? Soon we were both in our beds ready to sleep. Even though I was tired, sleep didn't come quickly. Anxiety was spreading its cold, writhing roots deep into my chest and stomach. I lay there for some time looking at a silver rectangle painted on the wall by the moonlight. When I closed my eyes, I could still see the weird vision I had that day. My roots were here, I could feel them, almost touch them, and they were reaching to me. I felt I was getting closer to my answers. I should go and see the logging protest. I felt that the answers I was looking for were within my reach. I should go and see the logging protest, find Cornell, make him talk. After a long while, all these thoughts become blurry. They slowly started to turn into pictures, sounds and colours. I drifted off. Night in the woods. A black cat stands directly in my path, its eyes shining in the moonlight. It looks directly at me, waiting. I tremble. Something is coming. It's huge and monstrous. Uh, I'm a cub. I'm a wolf cub like the ones my grandfather told me about. I will grow and my fangs will become sharper. I will taste blood. I feel a pull and surrender to it. I run towards a clearing. There are piles of fresh corpses of people who died too young, skinned and mutilated. Their loved ones stand around them, grieving, unable to do anything, waiting. And suddenly they're just trees and tree trunks. I weep. I weep and other voices join me, terrified and hollow. The trees are dead and I am here to help console their spirits. There is a stench in the air like meat rotting and acid, but somehow worse. I see the monstrous army, their mandibles are wear whirling chainsaws, their long metal arms are wrapped with black pipes that look like glistening intestines, their smell is vile, they wait unmoving. I pay my respects to the dead. I go to the dead trees, kneel next to them. Words come to me in a language that I don't remember, but that I know. Words about revenge and death and sacrifice. And then my voice tells me to look at the sky. There, between the stars, two shapes circle each other. An old, sad wolf with grey hair and a white weasel. They keep their eyes on one another as they continue their dance. Suspicious, but not hostile. We need to fight the enemy. The awful rotting stench, I know that much. But how can we do that when we don't trust each other? They stop, they look at me and the clearing. Um, I give them my blessing. I spill my blood and bless them with the words that I do not recognise but that I understand. They come down to me and their voice is the voice of Dapusha. Welcome back, you have been away for too long a time. I wake up. Chapter 2 Logging 
Okay, I think I'll wrap it up here. Seems like a good place to stop. Uh, yeah, that's quite interesting. I like the way it's written. Um, Maya's family mysteries. Uh, I mean, obviously, because the name of the game is uh, werewolf related. I assume her family is that of werewolves, and so are some of the people we've met. Uh, we've met here. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, though, quite what drove her family out? Well, should be interesting to find out if we can, if uh, when I continue onwards, maybe. But anyway, thank you very much for watching along. Hope you enjoyed it, and I'll catch you in whatever one is next.